Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Movies for Dumb Guys. I'm your host, Joe Johnson, and I am joined by Ryan Sharp. Thank you. I uh, couldn't have done it without the fans. <laughs> Tim <Ben>. Williams. <laughs> you yes. like me. You really like me. <laughs> and Denver Roshan. G- glad to be back. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'd like to thank my mother and father for making me possible. Um, Cue the music. As you, <laughs> as you may have figured out, uh, this is our Oscar-themed episode of Movies for Dumb Guys. Uh, the 2018, technically 2017 Oscars is just about a week and a half away. So we're going to focus this entire episode on the Oscars. Um, as you may or may not know, a few years ago, the Oscars went from five nominees, uh, Best Picture nominees, to as many movies that reached a certain number of votes, uh, which expanded that list. Uh, in the case of this year, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine movies nominated this year for Best Picture. And uh, they did that because they wanted a larger viewing audience to cheer on the movie that they wanted to see win, even though it may not have even had a chance. So this year's list of uh, Best Pictures that came out in 2017 are Call Me By Your Name, uh, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, Get Out, Lady Bird, Phantom Thread, The Post, The Shape of Water, and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Uh, of those nine movies, I have seen one, two, three, four, five of them. Um, those are the ones that I was most curious about and decided to pay 10 bucks, or in the case where I got a freebie ticket, uh, wanted to waste two hours to go see these movies. Um, the rest of them just did not really appeal to me, or I just couldn't quite find the time to go see it. Um, Ryan, what do you think of this year's crop of Best Picture nominees? Well, I was not impressed with this year's crop. I think uh, that they left off a couple of things that should have been on here that are not on here, and uh, I'm a little disappointed about that. But what are you going to do? Um, it doesn't really matter. It's, uh, it's all a popularity contest anyway. Give me one example of a movie you felt was left off this list. Disaster Artist. Oh, I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. Tim, your thoughts? Well, I've only seen three of them. And I I, I did want to see, I mean, you and I were talking about this before. I, I, I would go see every one of them only because it's interesting to me what the Academy deems as Best Picture nominees. Um, and normally when I go see a movie like that, um, you know, I can kind of see why it got picked, whether I like the movie or not. I can kind of see why, whether it be, you know, the direction or the acting or whatever the storyline. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I've seen three of them. Ryan, how many of these movies did you see of the nine? I've only seen two, two of the nine. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Denver, how many of these nine movies have you seen? I'm the exact opposite. I've seen all but two. Oh wow! Um, the and the one I'm really, I mean, I'm dying to see them both, um, but I have not seen uh, three billboards. That's the one I, I really. I'm surprised see. that's the one that you didn't get to see. That you know has a lot of heat right now. It was just bad timing. Um, and here? then the other one is Call Me by Your Name, and that one is just was not really playing in my area. Hmm. I would have gladly you know, gone to see it. Um, I, I thought this year was a pretty good year for movies. You know, how many of those are like classics that we're going to be looking back 10, 20 years from now? I, I don't know. Uh, I kind of have a love hate relationship with the Academy Awards. I love watching them. And I think they're great because they get people talking about movies and, you know, it's good promotion. It's yeah. uh, And the telecast itself is an, ev- is an event. Very and, entertaining. And when you think about what happened last year with the wrong Best Picture nominee or winner being announced, that's stuff you're talking about for weeks after the telecast. So oh, no. I just like the fact that it's an event that I want to see, witness. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And the hate part of it is, like Ryan said, 
most of the the winners are not what I would consider the best movies of the year, and oftentimes some of the best movies aren't even nominated. Um, so, you know, it's, give me an example. Give me an example of a movie you think should have made this list. From this year? From 2017, yeah. Ooh, that's a good question. Let me throw one out. I'm kind of curious to see your feedback. Some people were upset that my favorite movie of the year, Wonder Woman, did not make the cut. Do you think it should have made the cut? No. No. I don't think so either. Only because it's, you know, I agree that it's a very important movie, and it was a very entertaining movie, Mm -hmm. but it just had too many issues, you know. Yeah. Um, I... I'm disappointed that my favorite movie of the year, Blade Runner 2049, did not make it. Yeah. I, I, I think that definitely could have been. Yeah, I, I put that on the list, too. I agree with that one. Yeah. What I heard, I never saw Blade Runner 2049, and the reason I didn't is most critics said, if you like the first one, you'll like this. If you hated the first one, you'll hate this. And I'm not a big fan of the first Blade Runner. I think it's boring. Uh, Get I, out. I, Get out. I, I, <laughs> well, I mean, I... I I, I I almost agree with you. It's been it's I I didn't really remember like any I mean a, a couple parts of the first movie, but when I saw this, but it, it to me it didn't matter. Um, it was just I mean there was like a couple throwbacks, of, you know, to the old characters, but I I just I don't think that you needed to 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 really care about the first movie to like this one. Okay. But. Well, of the movies that were nominated. <laughs> Uh, let's start off uh, this conversation with the movie you think should win of those that were nominated. Um, n- discounting Wonder Woman, which I don't necessarily think is the best movie of the year, but I, it was my favorite movie of the year. Um, in my opinion, the best movie of the year was The Shape of Water. I loved everything about it. I loved the Beauty and the Beast aspect to it. Uh, um, I loved the political uh, overtones. Um, I loved everything about The Shape of Water. I cannot wait for it to be released on DVD so I can add it to my collection. Uh, it cracked my 100 favorite movies ever list. Um, and so I'm going to be cheering on this movie based on social media. When I get on Twitter and Facebook and stuff, mostly Twitter, um, there seems to be a love affair with, uh, with uh, Del Toro. Um, Hollywood seems to love this movie right now. It seems to have quite a bit of momentum going. Um, so on the night of the Oscars telecast, I'm going to be rooting for this movie to win best picture. Ryan, do you agree? Uh, no. Um, of, of the movies on this list, what do you think should win? I think Dunkirk should win. Um, I, I was, I felt like I was there and not that you want to be there, uh, but I think they did a, just a great job with the story and with the way they shot it. And, uh, you know, you really felt like you were you were on that beach. And uh, as sad as it was, I think they did it really, really well. I don't think it's going to win. Um, and I think Get Out is probably going to win because... Really? I, I do. Um, not because it's the best. Uh, I saw that and I, I was less than impressed with it but everybody seems to think it is the greatest movie ever made like that I've talked to anyways, hmm. except for you and lady shape of water. <laughs> now going back to Dunkirk, I love the movie. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a very immersive experience. Like you said, I felt like I was there. I love the fact that they took three different timelines and had them kind of overlap. I thought there was unique storytelling. Um, the problem I have with the movie is the story itself. I didn't think there was much of a story there. It was basically mm-hmm. a day in the life of this event, and here's what happened. But I didn't feel like any characters were redeemed. And so my, my issue with that particular movie is the story itself. But uh, well, I, mean, I do think it's a great movie. It's, uh, unless you just totally Hollywood it up, it's kind of hard to do that, though. Right, with historical yeah. dramas. Yeah, and you know, I'm glad they they didn't do something dumb like make it a romance movie where there's you know some girl that he's fighting for, or, you know, something that has been done over and over again with these movies that it was just kind of actual and true, and uh, you know, just kind of set back afterwards and was like, wow, like maybe we should pay more attention to you know, it's it's like a history book and live action, so it right. really impacts people. Yeah, Tim, of the movies nominated, which one should win? Which one will win? Well, since I can only really speak about three of them, 
Um, I would definitely say out of the three that I've seen, The Shape of Water would be the one that should win out of those. Um, the, the other two that I saw were Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri and Get Out. And I thought Get Out was highly, highly overrated. Um, I don't think it's all that original at, at all. When I watched it, I was just thinking it was like the Stepford Wives or like a bunch of other like Twilight Zone-ish or horror movies that have come before it besides who directed it and who the cast was. And Yeah, my, my response when I saw it, I really liked it a lot when I saw it, but my one-line review was it was like a really good episode of Twilight Zone. Is mm-hmm. that Academy material? No, and um, you know, going back to what you said about how they add more more movies now, I, I think that's just throwing a bone to the people that like the. And I think that Get Out is is that movie this year. I think they're just throwing the bone out to the people that like this movie. But I honestly don't think it's got a chance. I, I don't think movies like that that have a chance. I hope um, not to actually win. Now you brought up three billboards. Uh, I saw it. I thought. The acting performances were outstanding, but the movie is terribly, terribly flawed, and it seems to have a lot of momentum right now, and I think this movie is going to give The Shape of Water a run for its money, but I think it's a terribly flawed movie. Denver, what are your thoughts on this list? Well, I will defend Get Out. I thought it was a great movie. I think it is deserving of all the accolades that it's been getting. Um, You know, does it deserve to be the best picture probably not um and i agree with tim i don't think it will just because typically genre type movies don't win you know i think you had silence of the lambs that might be one of the only other horror type movies that have won for best picture um my vote would be if i was an academy uh, member i would be voting for the shape of water Mm -hmm. um but i'd put Lady Bird right next to it. I mean, it's not as technically ama- uh, as uh, as amazing as The Shape of Water, but, you know, it just uh, reminded me of those classic 90s Sundance movies that's all character study with quirky people and, you know, uh, you know, kind of slice of life stories, which you yeah. don't see much nowadays anymore. So, um there maybe was some nostalgia factor there for me, but you know, great performances, great writing, and and Lady Bird. So yeah, I saw it. I th- I thought the acting was phenomenal, but um, I, immediately after seeing it, I felt like I had just read some teenage girl's diary, and that's what it seemed to me like. It was just kind of a stream of consciousness and anecdotes and things that she experienced, and again. Where was the story? I didn't feel like there was much of a story there. I thought the the mother bickering with the daughter was a cliche that we've seen numerous, numerous times. So even though I'm I'm sure it was a very personal movie for its creator, um, I felt like I was reading a teenage girl's diary, and I didn't find it as entertaining as a lot of people seem to have. Um, so yeah, that, sexist pig. <laughs> So yeah, you'd rather a, rather rather read your own teenage diary, right? I oh no, I threw my teenage. <laughs> well, I, I didn't. You, did no, not, I didn't, you just posted on Facebook not no, too no, long no. ago. But those weren't my teenage years. That was my early twenties, and recently. I don't know I, if that I, makes it much better. Jim. But I pulled them out and I started reading them, and I gathered them up and I threw them in the dumpster. I'm like, <laughs> I can't do that to myself. They are brutal. <laughs> if, if I if I turn that into a movie, people would be like shooting themselves in the head in the movie theater. Like I can't take it anymore. Hey, so, uh, yeah. you know, you, you can call it a journal. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's, I, yeah, I wrote a journal. I don't write a diary. What are you talking about? Exactly. I don't write a diary. Yeah, you girls kept have it. diaries. <laughs> right. And, and you kept journal. it in your satchel. <laughs> yeah, not my purse. Did my my man carry on it and a little. Uh... <laughs> so I think we covered all the movies that I had seen. Um, can I say something about Three Billboards? Yes. Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Um, I didn't read a whole lot about it before I went and saw it. I didn't even realize that it was directed by a guy that has become one of my favorite directors lately, uh, who directed one of my, probably one of my all time favorite movies in Bruges. And, um, I loved in Bruges. Yeah. And seven psychopaths is, is great too. I didn't even realize it till the end of the movie that he, that he had directed this. But <laughs> when I had seen the little that I had seen about it, I, 
I saw that it was based on a true story. So, I thought so too. Yeah. So when I'm watching the movie, I'm like, how did this happen? How could this possibly happen in real life? And then yeah. when I looked it up, so I looked it up after and I was like, the the only thing the, this is the true story that it's based on. He was taking a bus trip through Texas and there was three billboards that were like talking about the sheriff there and and all and he was just like Oh well, you know what caused this guy to do this? Yeah, and he came up with this whole story. So that was the only element of truth in inspired it's, by. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's yeah, inspired and by it. Can I also throw something in there that I think it should just be called Three Billboards? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> now, I I said Three Billboards was horribly flawed, and let me explain why. The biggest issue I had with that movie is when the uh, the police officer stormed into that business where that teenager was working. <laughs> beat the crap out of him, threw him out of the window, kicked him in the head on the way out, and his new incoming police chief witnessed the whole thing, and the only punishment he got was having his badge taken away from him? That is attempted murder. That guy should have been locked up. And then exactly. after that, his character gets redeemed. And, uh, spoiler alert. Well, the and problem I was is in furious. real life, you have cops actually murdering innocent people yeah. and going on uh, with their career. So maybe that's where that was inspired from. You know? Maybe, but I, I was angry. I was angry at the fact that he got away with that and, and uh, that he was forgiven for that. And, well, and, and they hinted at other horrible things that he had done in right. the past. And I'm like, this See, character's awful. I, I, I saw recently that the Academy's kind of turning on this movie because of that, because yeah. they don't feel that that character should have been redeemed. Right. It, that part of it kind of reminded me of Crash a little bit, like, you know, saying, you know, nobody is like 100% bad, nobody's 100% good, whatever. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I, I agree with you. But, like, by the end of it, I was like, I was like, yeah. I, he was like I, a completely different character by the end of the movie, and yeah. I, I was annoyed by right. that. I mean, I I like to see character arcs and and characters get redeemed, but it seemed like I, it, it was forced. I could still see him. I thought he did a great job though as that character. I mean, I think oh, yeah. I think he might even win. Uh, What's he nominated for? Best Supporting Actor? Uh, yeah. yeah, Best Supporting Actor. I yeah. think he's won everything else. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I think he's got that locked up. I think Frances McDormand has uh, the Best Actress Award locked up. I thought she put on a clinic. I thought she, she was amazing. She's always good. I always yeah. like her. Um, since we're on the topic, uh, I have here the five nominees for Best Actor. Uh, Timothy, is that Shalaman? Am I pronouncing that mm-hmm. correct? Call you by, call me by your name. Daniel Day Lewis and his final swan song, Phantom Thread, Star Wars Phantom Thread. Uh, <laughs> Daniel Kaluuya, I'm sorry if I'm butchering his name for Get Out. Gary Oldman in Darkest Hour, Denzel Washington, uh, Roman J. Israel Esquire. Um, I ha- I think this one's wide open. I have no opinion. Uh, I've oh, only no, it's, seen it's one it's of those. Gary Oldman, a hundred percent. He's won Gary everything Oldman. else. He's gonna win this. He's down. uh he's unrecognizable as Winston Churchill. I was shocked when I saw his name come up on the screen, like during the trailer. I was like, what? Where was when? Or where was Gary Oldman? Uh, it's tr- he, he's transformed in this movie. So, based on the trailer that I saw, I would agree with you that this. Well, is I did much a see lot. Darkest Hour, and uh, he was amazing in that, and he does deserve it. And what's interesting is if you watch Darkest Hour, it's really a prequel to Dunkirk. Yeah, it's like a companion piece. It leads right up to the events of Dunkirk. And I think part of the problem maybe for American audiences is not a lot of people, I I include myself, knew about Dunkirk, historically speaking. Mm -hmm. And in England, I'm sure everyone knows it. It, You know, it's, it's an amazing part of their history. So Nolan might have been writing it from the vantage point of everybody knows the importance of Dunkirk and the context. And that's why it seems so weird to American audiences like, what's going on? Who is it? You know, where are we? Right. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, if you watch those two movies together, you'll get more appreciation of, uh, of Dunkirk. And I don't think we talked about Phantom Thread. Um, I saw that. That was amazing. That was um, really like a classic Hitchcock thriller. Really, the the trailer mm-hmm. that I saw just looked confusing, and well, it, I didn't even know what the movie. It made was it about look there. like it was just this, you know, lush 
you know, historical about drama. The fashion industry. Yeah, like that, and yeah. It, it definitely is about that, especially in the, the first third. Um, but then it kind of takes a, a turn, and it gets really interesting. Um, totally not what I expected. Uh, so I would highly recommend that, especially since it's Daniel day Lewis's final performance, supposedly. Right. And then the, the only other one I don't think we talked about was The Post. Yeah, which, and I'm not hearing overwhelming reviews for The Post. Uh, it's a very good movie. Yeah. It's not. The problem is it was made by Steven Spielberg, who's made so many other better movies. Yeah. And so in his, you know, pantheon of films, it's kind of low on the list. Anybody else, they would be, I think they would be celebrating this movie for how good it is. And it is so timely. It's all about the freedom of the press. Right. And especially uh, with Meryl Streep being the owner, you know, women finding their voices and, and, and speaking mm. out. So it's kind of like the real life Wonder Woman. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, we didn't discuss Call Me By Your Name. Uh, I didn't see it. I had no interest in seeing it. Um, anyone see it? Anyone think this movie has a shot? I don't think it has a shot. I do want to see it. I want to see it uh, a lot. I don't know if I'll be able to see. I usually try to see all the movies before the night of, just so I can, you know, chime in with my uh, <laughs> with my opinions. Yeah, that's but, another reason why they should just go back to the five. Yes, it makes <laughs> it a lot easier to see them all for sure. So let's let's recap. The movie that I want to win is The Shape of Water. The movie that I think will win. <sighs> Boy, I'm having a tough time with that. I want to say Call Me By Your Name only based on what happened last year with the with the Oscars, um, that there might be, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say a political movement, but there's a movement to recognize those types of movies. Um, so will that happen again two years in a row? I don't know. Um, but I want to see The Shape of Water win. Ryan, which one do you want to win and which one do you think will win? I thought we just did that. I know. I just just <laughs> recap. This is a recap. Oh, just real speed quick. round. Dunkirk <laughs> and Lady Bird. I think will win. All right. I think Shape of Water should win, and I think it will win. Oh, okay. Good. I I agree with Tim. Good. Should and will. All right. That's Shape what of Water. I'm hoping for. All right. Now, um, what I want to do for the rest of the program is we're going to kind of go back year by year, talk about the movie that won, talk about the movies that it beat. And discuss what you think should have won. And it, last year, uh, for the 2016 uh, movie season, uh, Moonlight won. It beat out La La Land, Manchester by the Sea, Hidden Figures. Uh, man, that's a long title. Uh, Fences, Arrival, Hacksaw, Hacksaw Ridge, Hell or High Water, and Lion. Uh, I was angry. That La La Land lost. I thought it was by far the best movie of the year, my favorite movie of the year, one of my all-time favorite movies ever. The fact that the director and the cast stood on stage and had the award ripped from their hand and put into the hands of the director from Moonlight I thought was just an atrocity. Um, I think La La Land had more of a cultural impact, long-term lasting impact. I think La La Land's a movie people are going to be talking about long after People forget all about Moonlight. Um, any thoughts? I think they already forgot, have forgotten about Moonlight, right. to be honest. And I tell you what, one of the most entertaining things to me was watching you watch the Oscars, where they <laughs> your your emotions, your your highs and your lows, and your suspense. And <laughs> what are they doing? There's somebody on stage. There's somebody on stage. Well, yeah, I, was I like, saw what was, was like, going on in the background, and I'm like, something's wrong. Like I saw Emma Stone go, oh my god, and I'm like something's going down. And it was one of the most shocking things I've ever seen on the I, Oscar telecast. Watching you, I thought we were watching the game-winning drive of the Super Bowl <laughs> uh, two minutes the to Oscars go. Oscars like, yeah. are my Super Bowl. I know. It was, uh, it was really exciting. So thank you for that memory. Um, <laughs> I thought Hidden Figures was going to win, uh, to be honest. But um, I could see La La Land have taken it without any question at all. So mm -hmm. um, I think it is interesting how it all transpired. And uh, I don't know. You think uh, this year they should do Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway again? Like, no. Do a recap? No, they should be banned. Uh, Tim, what do you think? Yeah, banned, Dick I, Tracy. Uh, <laughs> looking at this right now, I have never, I have not seen any of these movies, <laughs> honestly. And I didn't, I don't think I watched the Oscars last year. I thought maybe Steve Harvey hosted it. 
<laughs> He's waited Denver? how long? A year for that? Like, <laughs> got that one saved. Uh, last year was a bad year for me because I didn't see a lot of these. Mm-hmm. I did see La La Land. I did like it. I would have given it to Hidden Figures myself. Um, uh, I was also a big fan of Arrival. Um, but yeah, definitely not Moonlight. All right, 2015 Best Picture winner was Spotlight, which I didn't see. I don't even have any re- recollection of what it's about. It beat out The Revenant, The Big Short, The Martian, Mad Max Fury Road, which I hated, uh, Room, not The Room, Room, Bridge of Spies, which I thought was okay, and Brooklyn. Um, did Spotlight deserve to win in 2015? Yes. Refresh my memory. What was it about? That is the, uh, it's about all the reporters from Boston that uncovered the Catholic priest sex uh, scandal. Yeah. Okay. And I just thought that movie was amazing. So, comedy. <laughs> <Yeah>. Lighthearted <laughs> rock. <Light-hearted. laughs> Gets the girl in the end. <laughs> Tim, any thoughts oh on that 2015 um, year? I've seen a couple of them, um, but well, I've seen a few of them. I th- uh, I never saw Spotlight, so I don't know. But uh, The Martian, I thought, was boring and yeah, overrated. Yeah, I thought it was mediocre uh, at best. Mad no Max way. Fury Road was not, should not have been nominated. I agree. You guys uh, are on crack. I, don't, <laughs> I didn't think The Revenant was that great. Um, so, oh. so yeah, I don't yeah. know. Bridge of Spies, I thought, was mediocre at best. What? Not Steven Spielberg's uh, best work. Ooh. I enjoyed it, but uh, compared to other Steven Spielberg Well, again, movies, yeah, you're comparing it to yeah. Spielberg. Compare it to these other movies, and I think it holds up just as good. Now, the name of this yeah, podcast is. is Movies for Dumb Guys, and a movie that came out in 2015 <laughs> that I think should have been considered Star Wars The Force Awakens. I loved Star Wars The Force Awakens. I thought it was very entertaining, very good, very emotional. Should it have been nominated for Best Picture? At least nominated. Not necessarily win. Come on, man. No. Really? Really? No. I just can't see Star Wars ever getting nominated for Best Picture. If it, if none of them have by now, it's, yeah. it's not going to happen. Now, did Star, I, Star, I think Star, the original Star Wars. Yeah, I think Star Wars, Wars got nominated one. in 1977. It yeah. did get nominated? Yeah. yeah. I think so. Oh, okay. And I, I, as big of a Star Wars fan as I am, ugh, I, I'd be hard pressed to put that one in there, only because it was essentially a remake of the original, you know. So it, 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 right, right. It wasn't right. the most original I, movie around. Yeah, exactly. When I walked out of the theater, I, I was a little disappointed. Um, watching it again, I love it, but when I first right. walked out of it, I was like. I was like, really? They just rehashed a new hole. Uh, see, oh. I, I loved it, and it was. Well, oh, I wasn't far disappointed. My favorite movie I, of the year. Yeah, I I agree with you, Joe. Yeah. I loved it too. Originally, man. but then I saw it again, and I liked it. You know, but mm-hmm. but it was just you know my expectations were that it was going to be a more of an original, original story. Didn't didn't nope nope. <laughs> 2014. Oh, I don't count now. I I, th- I thought you didn't even want to chime no. in on this. Sorry, you were no. like, nope. No, <laughs> no, cool, Joe. No, that's cool. No. Bit, bit. I see. Zip it. Sorry. Zip. Zip it. Shabba kaba. <laughs> 2014. Birdman. We're going to move on. Birdman uh, Revenant. won Best Picture in 2014. I absolutely I loved Birdman. Right. It was uh, basically uh, shot in one long, continuous camera movement, which uh, I really enjoyed. It beat out the highest grossing movie of the year. American Sniper uh, beat out Boyhood, Grand Budapest Hotel, which I enjoyed, Imitation Game, Selma, Theory of Everything, Whiplash. Uh, did uh, Ryan, did you see Birdman, uh, and do you think it deserved Best Picture? So, yes, I think Revenant should have beat Spotlight in 2015. Thanks for asking. Um, no, I absolutely think Birdman was the right choice. Um, however, I feel like in 2014... There was a ton of really good movies. Like these movies that were nominated, uh, I thought were amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, American Sniper, I thought was awesome. Selma, I thought was really moving. Uh, Whiplash, I thought you know that came out of nowhere for me, and I really really enjoyed that. But I did think the Birdman was very unique. I liked the way they shot it, and I like how it, it's up to everyone's own interpretation on what it means and what you know what the end actually is, and uh, just very well done. And I thought you know Keaton did a great job. Mm-hmm. Uh, reemerging as a star and kind of poking fun at his uh, Batman career, 
Uh, Tim, uh, Birdman should have won or no? Uh, I love Birdman, and I've only seen a few of these movies, but I think I like the Grand Budapest Hotel better than Birdman. I, I really I mean, enjoyed I'm that like one. a huge uh, Wes Anderson fan. Um, nothing against Birdman, but I, I just think uh, Grand Budapest Hotel was a little bit better. Denver? Yeah, this is a tough year for me because yeah. uh, I agree. This was a great, great year. I love Boyhood. I love Grand Budapest Hotel. I love Whiplash. And all those other movies were very good as well. So, ugh, I mean, I, I think Birdman deserves it, but barely, just barely, because these other movies were awesome. Now, another movie that came out in 2014 which happened to be my favorite movie of 2014. I think one of the greatest comic book movies ever made, Captain America Winter Soldier. Should Winter Soldier have been considered as a best picture? No, not, not when you compare it to the other. Not this year. This year it would have been another year, really yeah. pressing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think Maybe Winter if you, Soldier... It was, if it was 2015, you might have an argument because I don't feel like those movies were... Right. I'd agree. That's great. Yep. yep. Winter Soldier, people compared to like great movies like All the President's Men. I mean, I thought it was epic and had this amazing message. Um, I feel like it should have been considered, but I agree with you. But that 2014 was a really tough year. That was a, a lot great of good year. movies. <clears throat> okay, that's another thing. Going back to the Star Wars thing, will we ever see an actual superhero movie? Just a straight up superhero movie get nominated for Best Picture. I'm going. I'm glad you brought that up because I'm going to go on record right now and say that Black Panther will be nominated next year. I think you're right. Okay, I, agree. I haven't seen it yet, but yeah. uh, Deadpool too. Forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mark my words. I'm going to play this clip back when uh, after or when the Oscars roll around next year. Okay. Uh, all right. 2013 uh, winning movie, Twelve Years a Slave, which I never saw. Beat out my favorite movie of the year, Gravity, American Hustle, Dallas Buyers Club, Her, which we discussed at a recent podcast, Philomena, The Wolf of Wall Street, Captain Phillips, and Nebraska. Um, My personal gut feeling is that Gravity should have won uh, only because I saw it in 3D, like in IMAX, and I thought it was one of the most amazing movie-going experiences I ever had wasn't just a movie it was an experience it felt like an amusement park ride i was riveted from beginning to end um absolutely loved um gravity now does it hold up if you're sitting on your couch popping in the dvd watching it on your big screen tv i don't know if it's the same experience but my god seeing that movie in the theater was one of the greatest movie experiences i ever had uh ryan your thoughts i'm the captain now look at me Uh (laughs) look at me no, uh, actually, I didn't see 12 Years a Slave, so I can't really say that it should not have won. Um, however, some of the things that I did see on here, I don't know. American Hustle, I thought the acting was really great in it. Mm-hmm. I don't know that it was best picture quality. Her, I thought, was a really, really great movie, great acting, uh, very unique story. And like I said before, um, for our loyal listeners, something that I could see actually happening. But I don't know if it was best picture worthy, uh, just, uh, you know, you know, maybe best original story. Um, I go Wolf of Wall Street. I absolutely love with Wolf of Wall Street. I think mm. the acting was great in it. I think the story was great in it. Um, it was very entertaining from start to finish, and it's a long movie. And, of course, uh, you know, how can you go wrong with Margot Robbie? I agree. Tim? Uh, the only movie that I saw that year was Gravity, and I also saw it in IMAX, and it was uh, the, the same thing. Just the way, I mean, you felt like you were floating in space. Right. And, um, yeah, was it the greatest movie? No, I agree with you. If you didn't see it in IMAX, you missed out. Yeah, I agree. Um, but, uh, that's yeah, the only movie that's you the, saw? That's the only one that I saw out of that, uh, out of the, the Best Picture nominees that year. Yeah. Well, I saw all of those. They're all great. They all deserve to be nominated. Um, 12 Years a Slave is a tough one because it's, I kind of put it in that Schindler's List category where it's like, I'm glad I saw it, but I never want to see it ever again because it's just so emotionally intense. brutal. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're drained after that movie's done, you know. Um, I could have easily have given it to The Wolf of Wall Street as well. Love that one. Uh, love Gravity. That is a great one. 3D IMAX, Her, I mean, all of those movies, Yeah, uh, they're all great. All, uh, another th- awesome year. If you had to pick one, 
Wolf of Wall Street or I'd stick with Twelve Years a Slave just okay. because All it's right. it's a it's a great movie. It's well made and it's one of those important movies that the Academy Award loves. Okay. 2012 Best Picture winner was Argo, which I think was mediocre at best. It beat the movie that I thought should have won Best Picture, Lincoln. Um, also beat out Zero Dark Thirty, Les Miserables, Life of Pi, Silver Linings Playbook, Django Unchained, Amor, Beasts of the Southern Wild. Um, I think Lincoln should have easily had taken that. I thought it was phenomenal. I thought Daniel Day-Lewis was incredible. He won Best Actor that year. Uh, when I finally got around to seeing Argo, I thought it was entertaining, but not Best Picture material. Ryan. That surprises me, um, not about Argo, but that that Les Mis wasn't your favorite. I love Les Mis, but um, Lincoln was an important movie. Uh, I, I loved everything about Lincoln. I'm a Lincoln fan. Fair enough. I just, I'm, that surprised me. But, uh, if I had to guess for you, I would have said Les Mis. But um, again, another really good year for movies. Uh, so, uh, you know, Silver Lining Play, Silver Linings Playbook, say that. Um, I thought that was really good. I don't know if it was best picture quality though, but a lot of people tend to disagree with me on that. Uh, Django, man, that movie was something else. And I think it was one of the greatest westerns ever made. Totally, I, that's yeah, a great movie. Yeah, I I, I would have given the nod to uh, to Django. I, I don't want to sound like a Leo Slappy all of a sudden, but <laughs> yeah, thought, Revenant, you know, Wolf of Wall Street, right? Yeah, right. Dang yeah. Oh, you train. got that I liked Revenant. All right, <laughs> it's actually the bear that I liked in that movie. By the way, gotcha. um, I thought Leo should have. I don't know if he got nominated for Django, but if he didn't, he should should have. And I think he should have been considered as best actor because that was one of the most intriguing characters he's ever played, playing that great villain. villain. Yeah, and uh, that was a great performance by you Leo. know he actually cut his hand in that right. scene, right, and blood all over the place, and just kept going. Yeah, yeah. Tim, uh, I've only seen a few of those. Um... Now that's Lincoln. That, that's not Lincoln uh, Vampire Hunter, right? No, 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 no. Because <laughs> I did like I did like that one, but um, or what was that, that one was with uh, uh, with uh, <laughs> All right, All right, All right? Was that Lincoln all right, Lawyer? All right, oh, right, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, right. All right. Lincoln all right, Lawyer. All right, all right. Nice. Um, but uh, yeah, the ones that I have seen, I would probably put Django uh, up there as well. I did not see Argo, so I don't know. But uh, but Django, I loved. Um, so out of the ones that I saw, I would probably put Django as number one. Denver. I love Dargo. It's a great movie. It deserved to win. And you have to remember that the Academy Award uh, always give the movie uh, the winner that is about movies. Uh -huh. So yeah. Argo took place in Hollywood, at least part of it. And so mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. almost a shoe in that they'll give it to. But right. I actually did think that it deserved to win. I love Lincoln. That was Probably be my second, and Django maybe the third. Um, so uh, again, another great year. But yeah, I, I think they got it right. Now, my favorite movie of the year, which is not on this list, is Marvel's The Avengers. Came out two thousand twelve. Now, again, I think it's one of the greatest mm -hmm. comic book movies ever made. Should it have been considered as a best picture contender? I don't think it's one of the best superhero movies. I yeah. I, I love it. But I thought it was overall, it wasn't a great. I think it set the standard, like the formula that all comic book movies should at least try to measure up to. I Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love the Avengers. I mean, for them to be able to put all those characters into a movie like that and, mm -hmm. and everybody have their big moments yeah. and, and, um, you well, know, that's what was great about it for sure. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, justice together. league tried and failed miserably. Uh, yep. Yeah. And, uh, but, but yeah, uh, again, I mean, it'll, it'll remain to be, you know, to be seen if they'll put a, uh, if they'll nominate a real, you know, Marvel or DC superhero right. movie. Nope. 2011. Speaking of movies about movies, The Artist, uh, Best Picture winner. Uh, only one word of dialogue in the entire picture, black and white. Uh, when I finally got around to seeing it, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was fantastic. So I would probably agree with that choice in 2011. It beat out The Help, The Descendants, Hugo, Midnight in Paris, Moneyball, The Tree of Life, 
Warhorse, extremely loud and incredibly close. Uh, Ryan, did you see the artist? I did not. Um, but I don't need to, to know that I feel like the help should have won. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the help was just amazing. And I think, again, the acting is spot on. I seem to recall that being the front runner and was a little bit of an upset when yeah, the I, artist was announced. I thought it was going to be the next color purple. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was just great. Um, I love Moneyball too. I'll watch that every single time it's on. I'll stop and watch. Um, but it was kind of kind of flat, and I don't necessarily think it would have been best picture. But I do really enjoy that movie. Tim, uh, I've only seen a couple of those, but I have seen the artist, and I really liked the artist. Um, now was Hugo that computer generated, uh, computer animated? Hugo one? was Martin Scorsese, where he uh, takes place in the Paris train station. Yeah, I, it was I thought his that first three was... D movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was overrated when I finally saw that too. I just I didn't see what the big deal was about that, but. Uh, but yeah, I really did like the artist a lot. And, um, so yeah, I think the artist should have won because I've only seen a couple of those. I need to buy that one on DVD. I don't have that one. Denver, did the artist deserve to win? Uh, <laughs> yes. I'll say, uh, not enthusiastically. I was a big fan of Midnight in Paris, even though I know Woody Allen is kind of on everybody's, uh, shit list right now <laughs> um but I, I i love that movie i i also love moneyball um war horse another spielberg movie i thought that was just amazing it it it, it looked like it was made in the 1940s mm-hmm. in old hollywood um tree of life was probably the most confusing movie of the year but yeah. it was also i think the most groundbreaking uh so that could have easily won um, the Descendants, Hugo, I liked all those. Extremely loud and incredibly close. I don't even know how they got on the list. Mm-hmm. That is a uh, you know, hmm. colossal mistake. But yeah, The Artist is a great movie. So yes, I agree. All right, let's go to 2010. Best Picture winner, The King's Speech. I saw it in the theater. I enjoyed it. Best Picture winner, uh, that's to be debated. Beat out 127 hours, Black Swan, The Fighter, Inception, The Kids Are All Right, The Social Network. My pick for best picture, Toy Story 3, True Grit, and Winter's Bone. Brian? I think that Winter's Bone should have won just because I like saying Winter's Bone. And and Jennifer Lawrence was in that, right? So it you like doubled down on that. Was she in that? Was she? In that? she yeah, yeah, she was go. the star. She was great in that movie. Yeah, yeah. it's great in every movie. Um, so. especially her act movie. Um, <laughs> no, I I I don't know. This was a, a wash year for me. I really like the fighter a lot. I like the Social Network a lot, but I I don't know that it deserved to beat the King's Speech. But I'd rather watch the Social Network Network over King's Speech. Right. And of course, Toy Story three, uh, you know, that wrapped up everything. It was really emotional, and I thought they did a great job for being an animated kids movie of really making you feel for these. Things. A lot, of, uh, uh, not to sound sexist here, but a lot of guys I talked to said that Toy Story three made them cry. Not me, but you don't cry at anything. I don't. You're a I really bastard. don't. You're That's dead exactly inside. why. A little so, bit. Little of bit. those movies, what would you what would you pick, or would you go off the list? Um, no, I, I, I think they got it right. Mm-hmm. I just, like I said, that wouldn't, if I had to pick a movie to watch, that wouldn't be it. Tim. Um, I've seen quite a few of these. I did not see the King's speech though. Um, so the ones that I did see, I, I really liked black Swan. I loved inception. Uh, I liked the social network. I loved toy story three. True get rip was okay. Cool. Um, so out of those, I think I would actually have to pick Inception. Yeah, out of those, yeah, I found I just, it confusing. Uh, I know a lot of people yeah. were confused by it, and then I think part I of the know. problem is I, that was one of those movies that I saw after all the hype, and movies never live mm-hmm. up to the hype if you see it too late. So when I finally got around to see it, I was like, "Meh." Uh, see, I saw it at the theater, and I loved it. Mm-hmm. I, I just thought it was fantastic. Um, I. I I guess I can understand why people were 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 kind of uh, confused by it, especially when they when they go back further and further and dream further. Within a but, dream. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. But and then like the social network, man. The, I think the problem it had going against it is that there was not a single likable character in that film. It was brutal to sit through and watch these 
People stab each other in the back. No, the Napster guy. I thought Brenda's song. <laughs> Justin Timberlake? <laughs> yeah, it was good. Brenda's song was good. Brenda's girl. song? Yeah, she's the girlfriend. Yeah. Okay, I don't remember. Denver? You know, this was another great year. Uh, I did like the King's Speech. I don't think it was more deserving than these other movies. I would have given it to the Black Swan, the Fighter, Inception, the Kids Are Right, Social Network, Social Network. <laughs> And probably 127 hours, so that would be low on my list. Maybe a little bit above Winner's Bone. Um, I might be on the same page with Tim saying Inception, just because I think technically that was the best movie that year. It did things that hadn't been seen before, and I think people are still kind of talking about that. Um, and, of course, Toy Story 3, that is a great movie. That might mm-hmm. be one of the greatest animated movies of all time. So yeah. I could easily have seen that winning. 2009, Best Picture winner, The Hurt Locker, uh, beat Avatar, The Blind Side, District 9, and Education, which I don't remember, and Glorious Bastards, Precious, A Serious Man, Up, not to be confused with, Up in the Air. Uh, I, I remember seeing The Hurt Locker. Uh, did not think much of it when I saw it. I thought it was very tense, um, but it didn't tell any story whatsoever. It was just kind of a day in the life of these guys who defuse these bombs. Does that make Best Picture winner? My opinion, no. I think the most uh, impactful movie on this list, the most culturally significant movie on this list was Avatar. Um, Again, it was an amazing experience to see it in the theater. Does it hold up as well on DVD? Probably not. And uh, I remember my immediate reaction to Avatar was I liked it better when it was called Dances with Wolves. Uh, it's just kind of a sci-fi version of Dances with Wolves. But of the movies on this list, I think Avatar kind of stands the test of time. Ryan. Tatanka. Um, I think Avatar just for, I mean, not even the movie, just the uh, what it was and like, the huge production and, and the first time that they were able to do this and all that, you know, it'll go down in history. Um, so based on that alone, not to mention what the movie was, uh, you know, I think it should have won. Um, I'm not a Hurt Locker fan, uh, but this wasn't a great year for me personally. I thought the blind side was okay. I didn't think it was anything special and deserving of a best picture nod. Right. Um, I do love the movie up, but I don't know that an uh, animated film will win Best Picture for quite some time. I think they're pretty, you know, just you keep bringing up these Marvel movies, it's not going to win. I Comedies are not going to win. The first 10 minutes of Up deserved an Academy Award. The rest you of know. it was a silly, stupid child film. I think you're wrong. I think it, it did, I think it was a, a great love story, and I'm surprised you being all about love what stories. stupid bird, or the talking dog in the... <laughs> Bird. Look, people still. <laughs> you know how much still. money I would pay to get a to have a dog translator. Well, yeah, for my but pet? there is. <laughs> I have friends still. They just named their dog Doug because of that movie. So the first few minutes of Up had me weeping, like I was just an emotional wreck. And then I'm like, what the hell is going on here yeah. after that? Yeah, there so. are certain movies that are too good at the beginning because yeah. then it's all downhill. You know, like. Yeah, well, <laughs> anyways, I still wouldn't have put it as best picture. Uh, I really, really enjoyed Inglorious Bastards. I, yeah, I, killing Nazis. I, yeah. I just oh, thought, that's the, a great movie. I thought the alternative mm-hmm. ending with, with the gunning down of Hitler, I was completely confused. Like, what is it? That's not how he died. So I like the Re- movie. Were you there? Uh, no, but I read mm. books. And mm. uh, I, I see mm. that, that show on the History Channel about hunting Hitler. And um, more well, than that's likely... Why, that's why I was in the movie theater. Because fake news, fake the news. The power of cinema can let you rewrite history. He's still alive. Yeah. Fake news. But, Tim? <laughs> um, I've seen quite a few uh, this year as well. I did see The Hurt Locker, and I agree with you. I think it was a little overrated. It wasn't a bad movie. But um, the Academy seems to really like that director. And yeah. um, so I think that might have had something to do oh, with it. Oh, she did Zero Dark Thirty, too, right? Yeah. And that, yeah. that was nominated, but that yeah. didn't work. Avatar, I did not see it until I did not see it at the theater. I, oh, I and that. I find that movie very overrated as well. I just, the, the, the bad guys are just so like one dimensional and cliche. 
uh, just some of the stuff they said was ridiculous. Uh, what's her name? It was just you know plays the same character that she always played in it. Um, oh, Sigourney Weaver? Or? No, the uh, what's her name? Um, the uh, Zoe Zaldana? No, no, the me- the, me- <laughs> the Mexican girl. Oh, Michelle Rodriguez. Michelle Rodriguez. Yeah, Michelle she plays Rodriguez. the same character that she always. I don't played. care. I love her. District Nine, I saw at the theater, and um, I loved it, like the first part of it, and then it just turned into a regular cliche, like um, you know, alien movie oh, at, no, at, at, no. at the end. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. that's a, I love that movie. No. That's a great movie. Um, oh. A Serious Man, I liked. Uh, Up, I liked, but um, definitely I would pick Inglorious Bastards as huh. my pick. I think it is Quentin Tarantino's masterpiece movie. Wow. Um, even above Pulp with, Fiction. Um, I have watched Pulp Fiction recently, and I don't think it holds up as much as it used to. Uh, where's your mic control? Um, I'm turning your mic. <laughs> Wait. Uh, believe me, I love Can you repeat that, please? Uh, that Did I hear you right? About Pulp Fiction not holding up? Yeah. 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 Who is this I'm, guy? I don't know. I think he got hit. <laughs> the When's the last the time you watched it? Uh, not recently, but the I last time I watched it, I, I think it gets better with age. I... Help us I, out here, Denver man. Believe me, I love Pulp Fiction as much as anybody. But it doesn't I, sound I, like. But it. I think I think Inglorious Bastards uh, holds up more <laughs> better, more better blues. <laughs> <laughs> I think it holds up better than than Pulp Fiction does at this point. Inglorious, uh, I think Bastards. Reservoir Dogs even holds up better than Pulp Fiction oh, at this yeah, point. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. No, and I loved Inglorious Bastards. I had problems with it. There's that whole British sequence that was totally extraneous. You could have lifted that right out of the movie and never even noticed. Um, I agree with you guys, though. The Hurt Locker did, definitely did not deserve to win. Mm-hmm. Um, Avatar technically was the best movie on that list just because it was so groundbreaking. Right. But, yeah, the story and the characters were pretty uh, just as much a bad retread of what's gone before. I love District 9, and Education was very good. Precious was very good. Up, I loved it. Up in the air, so yeah, Hurt Locker would be kind of down at the bottom of this list for me. All right, um, let's go to 2008. We're almost out of time. Uh, Slumdog Millionaire, which I enjoyed, didn't love. One Best Picture, beating out Frost Nixon, Milk, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, and The Reader. Uh, this is the last time that only five movies were nominated. Horrible year. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, not a great year for movies. Mm-hmm. Now, here's, here's, I'm almost angry to bring this up, but a movie that came out in 2008, because, and this is, I think, what changed the rules of the Academy. In 2008, The Dark Knight came out. In my opinion, that won. The Dark Knight, the fact that it wasn't nominated is an atrocity. It should have won Best Picture. Yep. It should have. The, the the message of the movie, the performances, I love. It's I, in my opinion, is the greatest superhero movie ever made. Um, it's a great movie. It's not a. I feel like you say that about a lot of. No, no, I've never said it's the. In, in my opinion, The Dark Knight is hands down the single greatest comic book movie, superhero movie ever made. And I, you can go back and listen to all the podcasts. What did you say about not, the Avengers? The I'm Avengers, not trying to call you out. I'm just. The, it was that year his favorite I said, of that year? What did you say the, about Wonder Woman? Uh, the Wonder year. Woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Avengers. <laughs> I said kind of, kind of, successfully pulled off a formula of an ensemble uh, cast, and, and it's kind of set the bar that other comic book movies should strive to achieve. Um, I'm not saying it's the greatest movie of all time. I might put it in my top five, but. The Dark Knight, the fact that it wasn't nominated when it should have been named best movie for that year is yeah, something I a, will never get over. I wasn't trying to call you out. I, I don't know why you, why so serious, Joe, but um, <laughs> <laughs> No, I I, <laughs> I no, I, I agree though. I really thought that was a great movie and I think these other movies that were nominated were not that great. So I agree with you that it probably should have won best picture, although you got to factor in that some dog when that came out, Bollywood was a really big thing at the time, so yeah. People would like to jump on. Well, I think it's uh, the know, best things. of these movies that were nominated. Sure. Yeah. But not of the year. Yeah. I was under the impression before seeing Slumdog Millionaire that it was like a lavish musical. And then when I saw it, I'm like, this isn't a musical until they got to the silly dance sequence yeah. at the end. But so it wasn't what I expected. But best movie of the year, I think not. 
Out of those, I've only seen Benjamin Button, and uh, I love David Fincher, but I I didn't get that movie because I'm I'm like watching the movie and I'm like nobody is treating this this, this uh, affliction that he has like it means anything. It was just like that that wasn't even a part of the well, movie. It's, it's, yeah, it it's just, it's a fable. It's a fantasy. It, yeah, it, it's it's a better movie if you watch it uh, right next to Forrest Gump. Because it's the same authors, okay, and it's almost like a carbon copy negative of Forrest Gump. So it's really okay. fascinating in that regard, but yeah, right. on its own, yeah. But uh, but yeah, Dark Knight should have, and you're probably right. Uh, but but who knows if uh, if they would have been nominating seven movies at that time or or more, would they have even nominated? And it that's at, why, that, at that point, that's why I think the uh, the uh, rules changed. I think had they allowed every movie that would have qualified to get nominated. I think Dark Knight would have gotten nominated. And I, I think it should have won Best Picture. Um, Denver, your thoughts real quick? Yeah, Slumdog, uh, best of the movies nominated for sure. Um, so I would give it, but oh, overall, bad, bad movie. All right. Now, I want to throw this out real quickly. 2004 Million Dollar Baby won Best Picture. Here are some other movies that came out that same year. Shrek 2, great movie. Spider-Man 2, which many consider the best of the Spider-Man movies. The Incredibles, Prisoner of Azkaban, which I think is the best Harry Potter movie, and Anchorman all came out in 2004. Now, I'm not saying necessarily that Anchorman deserved any sort of recognition or nomination, but what a great freaking year for movies. Holy moly. Those are all great ones. And then, same thing, 2001, uh, A Beautiful Mind won, which eh, was all right. Um, But that year... First Harry Potter movie, first Lord of the Rings movie, first Shrek, Monsters, Inc., and movie I think should have won Best Picture that year, The Fast and the Furious. No, uh, <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. But um, again, a great, great year for movies. Um, man, and that's what I think the Oscars traditionally fail to recognize are, are the most popular movies, the most fun movies, the most culturally significant movies. Um, and, and well, they don't nominate those because audiences are already going to see those right. and those are already making money. The, uh, the Academy Awards are really for the, the prestige pictures, the, yeah. the critics choice type movies. And it, they're just a big m- marketing and promotion campaign to see those smaller. You Unfortunately, know, a lot of people perceive that as, as the Academy just being out of touch. I mean, when you, when you have, you know, say five best picture nominees and everyone's going, what are those movies? They weren't even like in mainstream theaters. Like it just creates the illusion that the Academy's out of touch or kind of snobby about movies. And I, I think movies like uh, the dark Knight and fun, popular movies need to be part of the discussion and, and that these movies will be remembered decades from now. I agree. I'll agree with that. I, I'm a comedy guy, I so I want to see more. Him. I want to see more comedies up there, yeah. or just great performances. Man on the Moon, yeah, thought that was amazing. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, Carrie, uh, he would like win the Golden Globe, Jim Carrey, and then not even get an Oscar nomination, which I think is a travesty. Exactly. You know? All right. Well, we're just about winding things up. Uh, we got about maybe a minute left. Uh, any final thoughts? Yes, I have a final thought real quick. Uh, I just want to say that 1995 Braveheart, I'm super happy that one, best picture. And I think that um, Forrest Gump should not have won in 94, should have been Shawshank. That's my biggest upset ever is Shawshank should have won. I think Pulp Fiction should have won. I think Pulp Fiction should have won. I'm just looking at How can you say that? (laughs) What? Pulp Fiction is still above all these other movies, but as far as Quentin Tarantino movies go, I think think Inglorious Bastards is his masterpiece, and that's why he says that at the very end when he's carving the swastika in his head. He's like, I think this is my masterpiece. I think Death Proof was better than Inglorious. Oh, my God. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me on another episode of Movies for Dumb Guys. We will see you again soon. We'll get back to our normal format of naming our top 10 favorite movies in a given category. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.